Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. It's always a pleasure to have Rebecca Bagonitz joining us here, our principal interior designer. Excited to have her back here from Stokey, Illinois, from GoGo Design Group. And as always, excited to talk to her about the work she's doing with construction, consulting, designing. And of course, she's got a great guest with us today, too. So first and foremost, Rebecca, say hello and introduce yourself to everyone. Okay, thanks, Jill. Hello, everyone. My name is Rebecca Pagonitz, and I'm an interior designer. My firm is GoGo Design Group, and we specialize in residential interior design that nourishes the souls of the people who dwell in their spaces. And I'm very, very excited to have a past client with me today, um, Olivia St. Clair Long. And we thought it would be nice to talk about today how to hire an interior designer. And then we just wanted to talk about the kinds of people I work directly correlate with the type of people Olivia works. So if that sounds interesting, we can't wait to share. It sure does. So would you mind introducing yourself to us today as well? Sure thing. Hi, Jill. Hi, Rebecca. I'm Olivia St. Clair Long, and I am a family law attorney here in Evanston, which is right next to Skokie, Illinois. And uh, I am dedicated to helping people who are in family transitions or life transitions. And a lot of times that means changing the space around them in a mm-hmm. big way, sometimes moving into a new place, sometimes completely redesigning a house that they lived in uh, as a couple. And now that's changing. So um, I'm both a client who was not in a family transition other than changing a house. Uh, but uh, I am also a person <laughs> who understands people's family transitions when they do need a completely different environment. Beautiful. And how can we contact you both, by the way? Would you mind sharing your websites before we get started? Sure. I am gogodesigngroup.com and feel free to reach me at 847-337-0526. All right. So let's yeah, begin. Sure thing. Sorry. So I'm uh, I'm at olonglaw.com. So it's O-L-O-N-G-L-A-W.com. And you can call us at 847-556-8846. All right, go ahead, Rebecca. Let's begin the conversation. Yeah, so I thought maybe folks out there would be interested in the process of hiring an interior designer and how it works. And typically, I offer a half hour to hour no charge consult where I learn Which about the love. project mm-hmm. and um, we see if we're a good fit. And um, I just want to suggest to people, and I really want to hear from Olivia, what she was looking for in an interior designer. Yes. Um, However, the most important things, I want my clients to feel immediate trust. So I walk in, I do my best um, just to be as authentic and transparent and genuine as possible. It's kind of by default with me. I wear my heart on my sleeve. Um, And the first thing is, you really want to get that feeling of comfort and trust. And really your interior designer's role is to have your back at all times, to be your advocate, to listen to your concerns without getting defensive yeah. <laughs> and, and resolve concerns that aren't necessarily, it's not a negative thing. It's, it's adult communication, you know, and, and it's the interior designer's obligation to their client to listen thoughtfully and make sure that the client's needs are met. Do you have anything to say about that, Olivia? I do. And it's funny because as I hear you (laughs) discussing it, I think about how many ways that um, your business and the way that clients vet you is similar to my business and the way that clients vet me. Because of course, the words that you've used are similar to the ones that you want from your lawyer, right? You want trust. Right. Yep. You want somebody who's going to be honest with you. You want somebody who has your back at all times. Right. These are these are very similar um, qualities. And I'm thinking about myself as your client and like a long conversation that we had in the parking lot of a lighting store in Skokie in which I was fully stressed <laughs> out because uh-huh. of my project and all of the listening and um, and, you know, kind words that you gave me during uh, during a time when I was definitely not at my best. And I do that for my clients too. So I, um, I think that it does have a lot of crossover. The only other thing that I would say beyond obviously what Rebecca said, um, as a client, one thing that I think is um, for me personally is really important 
is I wanted somebody who had a, um, a view of the world and an artistic sensibility that I considered to be um, closer to the avant-garde or to the fine art, as opposed to being um, down the middle, because the reason I wanted to hire an uh, interior designer is because I know I can make a space look elegant as long as you like beige and gray. <laughs> exactly. I can do that. Me too. Right? I don't know how to move <laughs> nope. past beige and gray in a way that still looks elegant. And for example, my house that Rebecca helped to, um, you know, bring to life and all I had as a, as a design kind of direction was I just don't want it to be basic, mm -hmm. right? I want it to be something other than what I can uh, conceptualize myself. Yep. Uh, so like I have a, a dark blue wall and then a green wall next to it and it doesn't look like a clown house. And that's really what I wanted. <laughs> ah, and of course, Rebecca makes those things happen. You're right. I, I'm just like you. I don't have that palette. I have the the grays and the beiges, but there's no there's no flow. <laughs> and I, I can make it look like a furniture store, right? I can yes. make it look like like a like a catalog, but I can't make it look like an a place that is beyond that. Yeah, and I wanted a place that was beyond that. And we have some photos to demonstrate. I was I going to ask. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hold on. Olivia and her family do a lot of cooking. They cook together. And that was a major criteria, correct, Olivia? That you Absolutely. Yeah. My, my, um, my wife's mother is one of six siblings, most of whom still live in Chicago. And they're all in their 60s now. And all of them have three kids. So small family gatherings are like 30 people. So we have a huge table here. Um, I think right now, it. I, I don't know how many people... Do you actually get around that now, Olivia? I don't know when you entertain. <laughs> well, I had I had a kickoff meeting for something I'm doing on Tuesday, and I had 14 people there, and we we were squeezed. It's a six foot around table, but we everybody could get a slice of it, and there were 14 of us. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And this is just a closer shot. Um, the backsplash and the shelves. I know that was a discussion between all of us, right? Many times, yeah. The the backsplash. You had had two beautifully expansive, wonderful ideas about the um, backsplash. But the one we ended up going with um, was, you know, this beautiful tile. And I believe that it comes from like Oregon, maybe. And it's yeah. um, made by a, an artisanal group. And wow. um, it's this beautiful blue <sighs> that's kind of got, got the green shine in it. And I just thought it looked like water. Um, and I thought it was really soothing and beautiful. And so this huge, you know, dedication of, of space with the backsplash um, just really helped to bring a huge room together. And um, I didn't want the shelves to look like Ikea shelves. I thought I was really worried about that. But as soon as they went up, they're fine. And they echo the um, the uh, orientation and the, and the space of the tile so much. They're about as thin as the tile and about as thick mm -hmm. as the tile. So they really um, merge so beautifully. A wow. match made in heaven. And Beautiful. just looking down, you go down these stairs into the mudroom. And I just want to say that um, this house is a historic house. I believe it was built in 18, the 1890s, correct, Olivia? Yeah, it's like 1891. So we, this is the back of the house. Um, and this was all new. So we tried to blend it with the front of the house. And downstairs is a beautiful mudroom. And again, you get a beautiful view of this custom-made table. And we worked around this beautiful black uh, display unit that was existing. And that's one thing that I really try to do. Um, if there are pieces that people either have already bought, recently bought, or have a sentimental attachment to it, let's just build the design around it. Ooh. And did you want to, uh, well, I guess I should just ask, um, you know, point out, you know, some of the, the, the work in there is that a hardwood floor is that what type of countertop is that is that hardwood or is that don't tell me it's vinyl so the one you're looking tricking. at now in the bathroom is tile that looks like wood but previously when we were looking at yeah, the kitchen the kitchen was it was but, hardwood but this is what like oh my goodness right so this is a, a traditional hardwood floor that is oh. actual porcelain tiles that looks like wood Right. And I, yes. And what inspired me when I saw this is, um, first of all, this was relatively newer on the market when we worked together. Um, and what inspired me is we wanted this modern, glammy feel, yet the setting is a very old home, a historic yeah. home. And so I wanted to honor that. 
right? So if you look at the um, shower, the inside, each one of those is a tile that is, um, it's, they're huge. They're like 18 by 12, you know, like 18 inches by 12 inches, big rectangles. And each of them has this beautiful white on white bas relief pattern. And um, it was so funny. This is one of the first days that Rebecca and I ever worked together is we were in a tile store and I had talked <laughs> to her a little bit about what we wanted. And I, I tried not to use too many words that said like modern, clean lines. But as you can tell from the, from the final product, it's not a very flowery space, right? There's yeah. not a ton of like, it's feminine, but it, it has like a, um, like a stripped down quality a little bit mm -hmm. to make it industrial-ish or farmhouse-ish or something. But yeah. I remember, Rebecca, you brought me that white tile and you were going, is that too feminine for you? And I cracked up <laughs> laughing because it looks identical to my towels that I actually have in my bathroom that yes. are white on white with a bar relief pattern that's floral, just like these. Yeah. So it's like putting wallpaper in your shower. <laughs> yeah. Crack me up. Wow. That is awesome. <laughs> And this is Tristan's bathroom. I hope he still loves it. He does still love it. And you know what? All the adults who use it love it too. This was our nod to Tristan's love of Marvel comic books. And, um, you know, Tristan's 20 now in May. And um, he was like, kids grow up really fast. Obviously everyone knows that. But when we worked together, it was 2017, 2018. And so now it's like six years later. Um, and he's not a younger teenager anymore, you know, but it's still really pops. It's still really elegant. Um, while still being kind of, you know, masculine and comic booky. <laughs> that is so, so much fun. Cool. That was so much fun. Are those? Are th what is that? Are those tiles? Oh yeah. Sorry, I went too fast. That's okay. It's okay. Yeah, because like they they look like cartoonish, like comic like, and yeah, like yeah. The They're most important thing tiles. to me, Rebecca, that you did here, not only was the um was the fact that the the, the color change in the tile is one third and two thirds which is so visually arresting. But it's only one third and two thirds if you don't count the ceiling. Tiling the ceiling creates it as a half and half with this like visual depth to it mm -hmm. that is so, um, it's just beautiful to me. Wow. Yeah, and I wanted to create that feeling of, I don't know, I wanna think of the tube or subway or, totally. you know, kind of. Um, so yeah, that was exciting. To be able Luke to Cage that. had come out recently and um, Luke Cage it was a big piece of inspiration, which is, you know, it's New York. It has that um, red, green and yellow or red, green and gold kind of um, color scheme, especially red, green and black, because Luke Cage famously is a black superhero and my son is black as all, also. So uh -huh. it was a huge piece of inspiration because Luke Cage was like a huge deal among young black men. Ooh. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So my favorite part of this room is the painting, <laughs> believe it or not. And this is what I love is when clients have artwork that is dear to them. Uh, like I said, existing pieces are dear paintings to them. We build the room around it. And th this, I think, worked really well. Yeah, my oh. wife's aunt painted that picture. She's a, um, she's a self-taught professional artist. And it actually came from one of our, uh, it came from our condo that we moved from when we moved to this home where we had a massive wall that we needed something on. And all we asked, basically she came into the room and she said, what do you want? We said, whatever you think would look good. And then she gave us back this stunning Swan Lake, um, you know, ballet painting. And it was part of why we picked the blue, but not all. It coordinates with the blue, but the blue was also, um, Rebecca, I remember where you wearing a scarf that looked like Poochie that ended up having all of the colors we picked in the house in it together. <laughs> yes, and this was your existing sofa, the beloved yep. sofa that Same. was not wow. going to, but I, so we just blended everything together, gave it a modern twist. These chairs are swivels so everyone can watch the TV. And here's the TV area. Amazing. So this is the other side of the room. Just to give you a sense, blending the old with the new and using jewel tone colors. Ooh. And those are the images I have. Um, let's talk about the kinds of people we work with, Olivia. How about that? Sure. And I'm going to stop share. There we go. All that right. Out well, so I work with all kinds of people, but for, you know, my messaging for my business, of course, it's good to, to determine the people that your niche. Okay. And one of my niches is working with women who are going through a major transition in their lives, whether 
they are getting divorced or they lost a partner or loved one or spouse and they're starting their life over or they have to um, figure out how to create their home um, by honoring the person perhaps who passed away, but um, making it their own again from a different mindset. And um, it's a pleasure to work with women who are going through this because it, you know, there's some healing involved and, and I really do view my work as healing spaces. Um, and what I love about Olivia, and I've said to her over and over again, I wish I knew her before my divorce, not that my divorce was ugly or anything, um, but I was like a deer in headlights and had no idea what I was doing. And um, Olivia is, in my mind, a superhero. So you really are, Olivia. Ooh, You're a badass. You. So please, please tell us a little bit how you work with your clients. Sure. Thank you. It, it's so funny, right? Because like the the... The thing people don't usually think about um, overtly about art as a as a necessary aspect of healing, right? However, we think of actions that we take, right? If you want to feel better, sometimes people will, for example, go to the botanic garden, right? So that's yeah. a way of using art as a method of healing, but mm -hmm. we don't use that as the phrase for that. I think that um, Rebecca, your work is so uh, helpful and healing and inspiring to people because you know thinking about art and thinking about your life visual sense and then creating that out of nothing is a very um, is a very <laughs> healing thing to do, right? Because you do have control over an, an aspect of your life, which is the visual space in which you live. Um, and then that's also kind of similar to what I do for folks every day, because what I tell them is like, hey, this that you're really like anxiety and trauma make the brain work very differently yeah. than it would without those things. Um, you get very fixated on things that don't matter to you. You get very fixated on things that are emotionally resonant right now, but they won't be in three years. Yeah. Right. So part of the gift that I can give um, is sort of a metaphorical sense of what Rebecca can give. Like Rebecca literally gives perspective to visual spaces. Right. I give perspective to people who are going through problems in a more metaphorical and academic sense. So I have told so many people when we're making um, a negotiation for something. So this is the point where you walk away from these three points because they will not matter to you in three years and it's time to move on. Yeah. Right. But I have to get someone to be able to hear that. True. And so it takes time because that's obviously not how I speak to people in a first phone call. Right. <laughs> so in a first phone call, we got to meet people where they are. Yeah. It's also similar because um, I think people are a lot more at sea in artistic spaces mentally than they admit that they are. True. I, I truly think that most people believe that they know what they like in terms of um, a, a visual sense, but they don't. I don't think they know what makes them, uh, mm. certainly not how to describe how to create. You, if you have a blank white wall, I don't think they know <laughs> how to get from that to what they like at all. And that's pretty similar to litigation. People know they want to get divorced. They have zero <laughs> understanding of how to get from here to there. Exactly. But they know that I do and they don't, but um, they also have <laughs> a unbelievable amount of misinformation and old cultural tropes and things really? from movies and things from friends and things really? from, uh, oh, from oh, yeah. movies. Like, give me an example. This sounds interesting. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, well, people get divorced in movies all the time, right? Yeah, true. Um, and so in um, there's one movie I'm thinking of, and I can't remember the name, but there are people who are around a table fighting about frequent flyer miles. Um, about who gets what in terms of frequent flyer miles. And um, they are, they're really, really mad about it. Ooh. And um, so there's that. There's, there's people who believe that they have to make a list physically of all of the property that they own. And when I say property, I mean like um, real property usually, right? Like a home. And they're going like, well, how are we going to split up our beanie babies? Oh. You know? And I'm, I'm like, well, okay. So like I have to, you know, educate people yeah. who often have had absolutely no contact with the legal system and probably never will again. And this is like the only time they're ever going to come in contact with a court. And I've been a litigator for 15 years. So I feel like I was born in a court yeah. and I'm going to die in a court, right? So it's different because they're coming in. Um, Rebecca goes to their house. They come to my house. So we talk about how, how different it is in court land. But, you know, when people get freaked out, I'm thinking of one dear client of mine who called me and said, you know, my wife says that this is community property. And so she gets 50 percent. 
And I said, cool. So this is state of Illinois and we don't have community property here. Yeah. Um, I, I have, I am licensed in California and you're talking about California and you didn't even know I was licensed in California. That is how irrelevant that is to you. Right? <laughs> so, um, it, community property is not a thing in this state. So your wife's description of what's going to happen here is highly suspect just to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you are just so awesome, Olivia. And I love the analogies you were making in between how we both work, because so often um, people just have no idea. And it's really all about educating. And that's another really important thing. Your 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 uh, professional needs to always be educating you so you can weigh everything. So, yeah, for sure. Awesome. I think the other thing, too, that both of us do is we both know the big ticket items and we help people understand why you have to spend no. budget here and not there. Right. Exactly. Because yep. both of us have that. You know, I have um, I'm thinking of a client right now who, you know, they're married probably about seven years, no kids. Um, both of them had had assets. There's probably about three million dollars between them. And they are about seventy thousand dollars apart in terms of the um, the settlement. And my friend or my client was talking to me and she was just, she couldn't see her way clear to coming, coming through on that. Like she wanted to pay 30 and he wanted 70. And I was just like, you got to pay him and go. You just yeah. got to pay him and go. And she's, she's just going like, I just, can't, I can't believe he gets to call the shot here. I'm like, no, you get to call the shot. You filed. You don't want to be married to him anymore. He gave you the price of freedom quickly. Pay it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, Otherwise you're going to pay me. Do you want to pay me 40 grand? That's so because much integrity. That is integrity yeah. right there. Oh, well, there's, I, there's enough human yeah. misery in the world. I don't have to make up new problems. You are so kind. Yeah. I love it. I love how love yeah. <laughs> there, there are many people who will pay me for years because they're in a situation that you can't get out of unless you do that. Um, I don't make up problems for people. I try to get them out. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thank you for sharing that. Um, we have just two minutes more left in the show. Um, wow. How can we contact you? I go so quick. All right. How did you want to end off for today? We still have two minutes. I just want people to make sure um, when hiring either a family law attorney or an interior designer, make sure that you are feeling that warm and fuzzies inside of you and you are you listen to your intuition. And if you're trusting them, just follow that because you know that they're doing the best they can. We're all human beings, but really, truly, we want the best for you. And that's the big, that's the message because trust is a big, big issue in our, both our lines of work. Yeah, yeah it's massive. And I, I guess the other thing that I would say is um, that you really can't, there are real people in the world who are, who are helpful in creating for you the life that you know you can enjoy and that awesome. you know you can have and Love you deserve it. it and you should have it. And you don't have to justify that to anybody. So um, you can see the thing you want and there are people who will help you get there. Perfect. That's Thank beautiful. you. It is. And how can we reach out to you both again? Would you mind sharing? Sure. 847-337-0526 and gogodesigngroup.com. Yep. And olonglaw, O-L-O-N-G-L-A-W.com, 847-556-8846. We work in the Chicagoland area. All right. Thank you both for being here. Always Thank a pleasure. You. And uh, we'll you. chat again next week, I'm sure. Enjoy okay. your weekend, ladies. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. so much. Bye bye. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. 
We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.